Okay, so you see I got the post on, and the one thing you really want to watch out for right here is you can snap those tenons off. A lot of leverage coming off of those posts. So you don't want to do that. So you want to put it up here and move these things like this until you get them to where they're lining up pretty good for those holes. Okay. And then just kind of twist them in right like that. <coughs> and twist them in. Well, go on. Stay down in there. And uh, then if I could find a hammer or a club, let's just get a... <coughs> There we go, just a little club there. Okay. Now before I drill these holes or these holes, I'd like to know where the center is. So I've got the center of the crest when we bend it, but I don't know that that center is, lines up with the center of the chair. So let's just do that. So I need a line to go off of, so I can take our stick we've been using here and uh, so I'm lining it up off of the uh, off of the spindles, off the spindle holes. Now if it doesn't uh, uh, the line doesn't have to be perfect because I'll take it from I'll take it from both sides and I'll uh, so let's see. So I'm gonna put it on the two. But on my seat Let me take this out of my mouth so you can hear me. My seat has uh, uh, cupped a little bit with me this way. Okay, so a little bit of an issue, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold it on this side, hold it down flat against the seat, I'm going to mark it, so it's quite a bit, it's a uh, you know, half inch to that side of the center mark. Now I'm going to hold this side down, right like that, and mark it. And it's about a sixteenth of that side of the side. Now, maybe that means, maybe that means, because it was rocking a little bit there, maybe that means that the center is halfway between those two. If the seat was flat, that is what it would mean. But since the seat's not flat, it's throwing me a curveball. That's what happens when it takes six months to make a chair. Things move, wood moves. Um, so let's see. Maybe I could check it. Uh, kind of crude, kind of a crude check here. You probably use a plumb bob, but then you got that, that the floor's got to be level, seat's got to be level, you go off all that. But you could, you, you could do that. Um, if I find a straight edge in the shop, so that, that uh, bench over there is straight enough for this chair. So let me just uh, turn it right like that. And, well, I can't see down there. Okay. I'm going to show you a little trick. So I'm going to go to this bench and we'll refocus. <clears throat> okay, so the only reason I'm doing this you know, this, usually the seat's flat enough and I just go off the square and that's what I use. But, since the seat was crowned like that, I thought, well, I'll just use this as a check. So there's a door frame over there that looks just like this door frame right here. And what I've done is I've positioned the chair to where it's fairly square to the door frame and the chair is fairly straight this way. Okay, it's good enough. And now, I'll just put this stick right on the center line, and I'll put it on the center line up here. And I'll look at that door frame, and it is uh, 
killing it. It's perfect. Dead on it. Go with it. So, I'm going to bore some holes now. <clears throat> Okay, for you more astute people, you'll know, you'll say, well, hold it, was his bench level, was the floor level? And that's why you don't really do it like that, because you got all those variables taking place. But uh, it's as level as the house it's going to go in. Uh, okay, so right here is where I've decided my new center is. And on the plans, I show that between the center spindle and the first two is two and three quarters of an inch and between there and the next one's three inches. Now, you might want to fudge that space just a little bit, and you could do that. Let's just see what that is. That is a, a quarter of an inch. <clears throat> okay, so what you could do here, what I say, two and three quarters. So this one you're going to subtract. So that one's two and 11 sixteenths. And this one is 2 and 13 sixteenths. So there's half of it. And then there's 3, so 2 and 15 sixteenths. And 3 and a sixteenth. Let's see what we got here. 3 and a half. 3 and a quarter. Huh. Well, that shouldn't have worked out like that. I've got to do that for a quarter that way. I subtracted an eighth. I subtracted a sixteenth. That is a sixteenth. That's an eighth. Well, there must be more to it than that. Uh, okay. That's close enough, though. That divides the, divides the difference we got. We're a little bit closer everywhere than we are right over here. So... Perfect. <clears throat> At least we'll call it perfect. Um, now we have to find the center of this in relationship to these down here. And you can just slide over that and hide that hole underneath it and mark it. And uh, just slide over that. Something like that right there. And Now, that's a little tricky to see, and if you feel like you, uh, um, you need a visual there, yeah, it's long enough. Let me get another one, I'll show you. If you feel like you need a visual there, you can just take two sticks and set it right on your hole, and then bring them together up at the top, right like that, and you can look, you can just look, and you can see, I mean, if you can hold them. You may need to call your partner down to help you with this part. Uh, yeah, and you can just see if it's even, if it's between the two. So it's a nice little trick if you, because you don't want to get it, you know, way too thin on one side or, or the other. Uh, So I'll drill the uh, holes in the seat first. You drill either one of them first, but we'll drill the holes in the seat first. Okay, right, so here we have the same extension that I used. I think it's the same extension. I have a bunch of these lying around. But the uh, same extension that I used down below when we drilled the, uh, the undercarriage. And uh, same bit brace, but if you remember, I changed to a bigger swing bit brace for some power. Uh, but you won't need that here. So now, piece of cake, put that down right on your point and pull it up. Now, I like for these spindles to have a little flare to them going back and have a little bit of flare to them going out. So this works perfect. Right here's where the hole is and I'm going to hold that extension just inside of there and up against here. So that's going to automatically pull that spindle out. And my spindles are crooked anyway because they're split and whittled 
and that kind of pulls a crook out of them in the right direction. So uh, let's see, what bit do I have there? It's probably about 26 turns that one is to an inch and an eighth. Uh, where? Put it on the right mark. So it's really hard to miss on this. I mean, you could put it on the wrong mark up here, like I'm almost almost here. Sure do like how quiet the bit brace is and just the whole motion. So I forgot to tell you, if you don't have an extension, <coughs> you can put it, put your bit and drill in between right here. Now, a cordless drill works the best for that because you don't, you aren't moving it and standing a chance of hitting the post on this outer spindle. Uh, if you do that with a bit brace, the issue is that you need a really short throw bit brace, like a six or seven inch throw. So you would need an extra bit brace, or what happens is you'd hit, you'd hit that. So, uh, but uh, but certainly you can do that by just putting it in between. Works fine. Just my compressor here. Okay. Got that. Um. Now. A three eighths bit. Put my foot on that thing, screw it, stop down. Back a little bit. That's good. So, 13 turns, that point sticking through. Well, 15 turns. Maybe I'm just counted on the first. So the reason I went back and then went forward again a minute ago is I found myself just a little too far forward and I didn't want to do all that correction. 
just while I was still down there, you can break the lead screw off in oak like this. The pine's a little more forgiving down in the seat, but this is not. Take it apart and bore from the other side. Be careful here. You'll snap those tenons off. So I've avoided using a vise through most of this chair because you might not have a vise, um, but I have used it I think at least once, but uh, you could you could just clamp this thing just down right like that and bore and bore through, uh, but you'd be having to guess what your what your angle was, so the reason I'm doing it like this is because I can see, I can put my little stick in there. Where are we? Right there. And I can just side it up right like that. screws itself into the end of that. Okay, we've drilled all our holes. Um, <clears throat> so the only thing I need to do before we assemble this thing, because we're not using glue, so I can just put it together and then start wedging it. But the only thing I'd like to do is to ease that uh, that taper right there a little bit. So I'd like to pull it back to about right there, flatten that out just a little bit more where it's not so abrupt. So. I'll do that, and there's no reason to set up to show that. That's pretty simple. Just take a draw knife, maintaining those eight sides, taper that thing down, and uh, when I come back, I'll put this chair together.